that is called uh, the Financial Services Modernization Act of 1999. Now, I come today with the confession that I am probably hopelessly old-fashioned on this issue. For those who have a vision of re-landscaping the financial system in this country with different parts operating with each other in different ways, that that represents modernization, then I'm just probably hopelessly old-fashioned. And there's probably nothing that can be said or done that will march me towards the future. But I want to sound a warning call today about this legislation. I think this is terrible legislation, just fundamentally terrible. I hear all these words used out here about, you know, fact is the industry is remaking itself, banks, securities firms, insurance. We, we better catch up and put a fence around where they are, or at least let's build a pasture someplace somewhere in the vicinity of where they're grazing. What a terrible idea. Now, what is it that sparks this need to modernize our financial system? And what does modernization mean? Well, let me just see the mergers. What about the banking industry's concentration? The number of banks with 25% of the domestic deposits. 1984, 42 of the biggest banks had 25% of the domestic deposits. Now only six of them. Massive concentration. I didn't bring the charts out about profits, but profits will show that the industry that says it needs to be modernized, banks have very healthy profits. Security firms, very healthy profits. Insurance doing just fine. And so there's a need to modernize them. Let's begin to ask the question, what about the customer? What impact on the economy will all of this so-called modernization have? And it's interesting to me that the bill brought to the floor that says let's modernize all of this is a piece of legislation that doesn't do anything about a couple of areas that I think uh, pose very serious problems. I want to just mention a couple because I'm going to offer a couple of amendments on them. And let me perhaps begin by reading an article that appeared in the Wall Street Journal, November 16th, 1998. And this is a harbinger of things to come, just as something I'm going to read that happened in 1994 is a harbinger of things to come, especially as we move in this direction of modernization. It was August 21st, a sultry Friday, and nearly half the partners at Long-Term Capital Management, that's LTCM, that's a company, were out of the office. Outside the fund's glass and granite headquarters, a fountain languid languidly streamed over a copper osprey clawing its prey. And inside, the associates logged onto their computers and saw something deeply disturbing. U.S. Treasuries were skyrocketing, throwing their relationship to other securities out of whack. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was swooning, and by noon down 283 points. The European bond market was in shambles, and LTCM's biggest bets were blowing up and no one could do anything, anything about it. This was a private hedge fund. By 11 a.m., the hedge fund had lost $150 million in wagers on prices of two telecommunication stocks involved in a takeover. Then a single bet tied to the U.S. bond market lost $100 million by the same company. Another $100 million evaporated in a similar trade in Britain. And by day's end, LTCM, this hedge fund in New York, had hemorrhaged half a billion dollars. Its equity had sunk to $3.1 billion down a third for the year. This company had made bets over a trillion dollars. Now, what happened? They lost their shirts, lost their silk shirts. But of course, they were saved because a Federal Reserve Board official decided we can't lose a hedge fund like this. It would be catastrophic to the marketplace. So on Sunday night, they convene a meeting with an official of the Federal Reserve Board. And a group of banks come in as a result of that meeting and use bank funds to shore up a private hedge fund that was capitalized in the Cayman Islands for the purpose, I assume, of avoiding taxes. Bets over a trillion dollars. 
in hedges. Could have just well set up a casino in their lobby, in my judgment, the way they were doing business. But they got bailed out. Now, this was massive exposure. The exposure on this hedge fund was such that the failure of the hedge fund would have had a significant impact on the market. And so we modernize our banking system. This is unregulated. This isn't a bank. It's an unregulated hedge fund, except the banks have massive quantities of money in this hedge fund now, did before and do now, in order to bail it out. What does modernization say about this? Nothing. Nothing. It says, let's pretend this doesn't exist. This isn't a problem. Let's not deal with it. So we're going to modernize the financial institutions, and we're going to say about this problem, nothing. Don't worry about it. Well, I find it fascinating that about 60, 70 years ago, in this country, we had examples of institutions whose fundamental future rests on not just safety and soundness of the institutions themselves, but the perception of safety and soundness, that is banks. Those institutions whose future success and stability is only guaranteed by the perception that they are safe and sound were allowed 60 and 70 years ago, 70 years ago, to combine with other kinds of risk enterprises, notably securities underwriting and some other activities, and that that was going to be all right. That was back in the, in the roaring 20s. And w when we had this go-go economy and the stock market was shooting up like a Roman candle and banks got involved in securities and all of a sudden everybody was doing well and everybody was making massive amounts of money and the country was delirious about it. And then the house of cards started to fall. And as investigations began and bank failures occurred and bank holidays were declared, from that rubble came a description of a future that would separate banking institutions from inherently risky enterprises. And a piece of legislation called the Glass-Steagall Act was written, saying, maybe we should learn from this that we should not fuse inherently risky enterprises with institutions whose perception of safety and, non sound, uh, safety and soundness is the only thing that can guarantee their future success. And so we created circumstances that prevented certain institutions, like banks, from being involved in other activities such as securities underwriting.